So on to rule six. Once ancient life happened, however that happened, how was it different? And I'm going to say ancient life was different in one important way. It was weird, okay? It had weird chemistry and used weird part of the periodic table. Now that's a judgment call, okay? You know, uh, I don't think they're going to feel bad that I'm calling them weird. Uh, but it looks different to this chemist. Uh, but the, the thing about life is it was still life. And the cool thing about it is even though it was weird and simple in some ways, it would self-organize into complex arrangements that even have a sort of beauty to them. So you can find this yourself, and you, the way you can find old microbes is by making what's called a Winogradsky column. Okay? So I, I want to show you what Winogradsky columns look like. They're sealed up containers of mud. But actually, over time, the mud develops, depending on what you started with, it develops into different layers. And you can see that you can get some really cool colors out of it. This is a little bit like, have you ever, you know, you, you know about the Italian dressing and you have oil and water and you have to shake it up to get the oil and water together before you put it on your salad. Because the oil and water separate. Some things just naturally self-organize. And uh, for instance, well, the Italian dressing has two layers that self-organize. If you can look carefully at this right here, you see there's three layers right here, the red, clear, and blue. And I'm going to mix those up. See, they're all mixed. And if we had another five minutes, I could wait here and you could see it self-organize. I'll come back to this at the end and you can see it will separate back out like oil and water into three layers. So this is what happens with chemical liquids this is what happens with microbes. They separate out and they make different layers. And you can do this yourself. Because all it means, all it needs is mud and water and some kind of carbon source. You've got to give your little microbes food, the world's tiniest pets. Okay? You've got to give them some egg or some newspaper, something to chew on. Put them in a bottle, seal it up, and don't forget, leave it out. Put it in the sunlight, because they need the sunlight energy. And then you wait. Mud plus light plus time will make these kind of structures. And so we know that these different colors go with different kinds of bacteria that do different kinds of metabolism. And so each one's slightly different, but they all follow a certain rule. On the top, you have organisms that use oxygen. In the middle, you have this organism that uses iron. And on the bottom, you have organisms that use sulfur. No oxygen down here, no O2. So as they're organizing, what's making them organize is these guys are getting away from oxygen. They're hiding out from this dangerous chemical that they don't like. And they're getting their energy without, um, without benefiting from the oxygen. The ones at the top are kind of like, you know, what's your guys' problem? This is, oxygen is great, but they're like, they, they won't try it. They're picky eaters, okay? But they, uh, they like to eat the stinky stuff. They like to eat sulfur and... Um, and other things. So the real, the real driving force in a Winogradsky column is oxygen metabolism versus sulfur metabolism. And you see the same thing at the bottom of the ocean where you see the sulfur metabolism at the bottom, the oxygen metabolism at the top. Now if you look closer at the lower layers, you see a lot of weirdnesses to them. On the top you see oxygen, nitrogen, and manganese being used, but at the bottom you see sulfur, iron, and hydrogen being used much more. Um, if you enter into a sulfurous environment, your inclination is to leave, right? Because sulfur doesn't smell good. You don't belong in that world anymore. The bottom layers also use weird elements that we very rarely even mention in biochemistry, um, tungsten, nickel, and cobalt. And so the, why these were used exactly and what they meant, um, a lot more about that in the book. But as you go down the column, it's like going back in time to a time when oxygen was locked up and life lived without oxygen and lived on sulfur and things like that. Now, as you're doing your Winogradsky column, I don't think it can build up to this extent, but some of those gases that the bottom layers produce are actually flammable when you bring them into our environment. That shows you what a distance there is between the top and the bottom. If you bring the two into contact, you can actually set it on fire. And of course, you know, the great thing about being a chemist is that you're allowed to set stuff on fire. And so here's a, 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 a scientist of some sort with some chemical background bringing it up and uh, setting it on fire, bringing the gases up from the bottom of the lake there. 
and you can see 500 videos of this on YouTube, you know. Uh, and, you, and you can watch them all day, I can uh, so. Anyways, <laughs> but uh, actually if we lived up north, then you, could, you would actually see methane bubbles when they leave the lower sediments, they don't have anywhere to go, and so they collect under the ice, making those really cool looking bubbles. Those are methane, those are flammable. And so there's a video here about some guy cutting a hole in the ice and setting those on fire. <laughs> so the sulfur chemistry is weird and different. And this shows up in art as well, because sulfur is found in ultramarine. Ultramarine is a crushed lapis lazuli, uh, and lapis lazuli is a semi-precious gemstone. So I was wondering what made it blue, and I looked at the formula, and everything I see up there is a very normal, there's nothing weird, there's no like tungsten or anything there. The weirdest thing is sulfur. And you don't, um, you see that in rocks, but uh, you know, what makes it blue? Well, it's blue color actually does come from the sulfur. The sulfur is in a weird triangle. It's trapped as a triatomic radical anion, and that's as much chemistry as I'm going to um, uh, throw at you tonight. Uh, it's really weird, just trust me. And it's trapped in the rock, and that is blue. When you grind it up and paint it on a picture, you get Mary's blue robe. So this is actually crushed gemstone, which is nice. Or you can say it's crushed sulfur, which is a weird metabolite. Um, and so you can say, therefore, it is weird. But uh, whatever it is, it's expensive and it's old, and it also holds its color pretty well. So if you're interested in having small pets from this time, but you don't want to wait for a Winogradsky column, you can order one of these dino pets, which has bioluminescent plankton, I think it is. And that's in a little crystal container, and you can like, you know, you shake it up and put it on your desk and they'll all glow. So that's weird chemistry, glowing like the fluorescein that we had over there. And it just shows, again, this time of life was weird. Okay. So even though it was weird, it still had these amazing self-organized uh, self uh, organized arrangements. And the order of the column is predictable because it is ordered by oxygen. Maybe you can't predict which colors you'll get, but you can predict that the layers on top will be like oxygen and the lower layers will be like old things. <laughs> 